It still doesn't feel like real life, dude. We're now closing in on the one week mark since it was announced via Nintendo Direct that Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door was going to be getting a remake. Never in a million years was I expecting Nintendo to do this, especially with how long Paper Mario has gone without traditional RPG style gameplay. Like at this point, the majority of the series hasn't been RPG. But the fact that they're actually doing this on top of the Super Mario RPG Seven Stars remake that's dropping in November, it gives me genuine hope for the future of Mario related RPGs. And with all these cards on the table, I wanted to list some of my hopes on a wish list of sorts for this Thousand Year Door remake. And be sure to let me know in the comments below if there's anything in particular you'd want added to this remake too. Anyways, enjoy. I know I might sound a little crazy requesting Wi-Fi for a game like this, because historically, Nintendo's not a huge fan of adding online features into Mario games unless it's heavily marketed as multiplayer, like, you know, Mario Strikers or Mario Party. So some could argue they'd have zero reason to add any kind of online feature to a Paper Mario game, a game series that's never had traditional co-op as an option. Well, I think there's still small things they could add, or a small thing. For instance, a leaderboard type thing that players can look at when they connect to the internet. Personally, a leaderboard would work best with something like the Pit of 100 Trials Challenge, showing how far certain players made it through the pit before getting a game over, or how long it took them to get to these certain points, with the people at the top of the leaderboard having really low times for competing each floor. Hell, if Nintendo didn't feel like adding a whole worldwide public leaderboard thing, they could downsize it and make it friend list exclusive. And like I said, I'm definitely not expecting any kind of online co-op to be available for a game like Thousand Year Door, but I think some kind of online integration for the game would be nice, even if it's just a leaderboard. And I think that'd be the most most ideal choice in my opinion. Badges in the first two Paper Mario games were always very crucial to how well you'd be able to perform in a battle. I'm pretty sure most speedrunners for those games prefer to put all of their level up points into their badge points so they can just do as much damage as humanly possible. These things added so much variety to the game's combat and was one of the things that made the first two Paper Mario games so special to me. So with the inevitable return of these items in the remake, I wouldn't be opposed to seeing some new badges pop up throughout the journey. Even if it's just a small handful, like less than 10 or five at most would be fine by me. For example, they could add a spike shield partner badge so certain partners could do damage to spiked enemies a bit easier. I think a badge like that would be really nice for someone like Goombella, or a badge that lets Mario move faster outside of combat, like the tornado spin from the first Paper Mario game. Using that thing to move around in the world was the best. There's other unused badges from the original game's files that the developers could decide to add into the remake as well. Some examples include the all or nothing partner badge, which increases an ally's attack power if they perform the action command, but makes them do no damage if they fail it, the Mega Jump badge for Mario, which would allow Mario to do a ton of damage with one jump at the cost of 6 FP, or the Triple Dip, which allows Mario to use three items in one turn. That one in particular might be a little overpowered actually, but you know, the more the merrier I say. The original Thousand Year Door game had a solid soundtrack, for sure. Some of my favorite themes include Rockhawks, Duplices, and Poshly Heights, and we've already heard through the trailer audio that this game will have a completely remixed soundtrack of the original game soundtrack. I think the three themes that we heard the most from this trailer were the game's title theme, the enemy battle theme, and Petal Meadows, which in my opinion all sound like improvements. So I want to see even more of that with the other themes, because there's not necessarily a guarantee that all the remixes will sound better than the originals. At least for me, of course, that kind of stuff is obvious up to one's personal preference in music. Origami King still has my favorite overall OST in a Paper Mario game, and I think that's because of how well the guitar was used in a lot of the tracks. As someone who plays the guitar, I very much appreciated that. So since Origami King was the most recent title, I'm hoping the composers and sound designers who worked on that game help out with the Thousand Year Door remake to create some banger remixes. Let Rockhawk's battle sound even more metal. I think Lord Crump slash Magnus Von Grapple's battle theme could benefit from some guitar as well. God, I cannot wait to hear how those will sound. I cannot wait. One of my few gripes with Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door is there was next to no post-game content nor much of an incentive to 100% the game because of the lack of reward in the post-game for doing so. Which is why I think it'd be a cool idea if the game added some post-game boss rematches, whether that be accessed in a different mini-area or in Rogueport sewers, or as a new version of the Pit of 100 Trials. Just them existing would be cool. Those post-game fights would ideally need to be harder as well because if they fought the exact same way as they did in their initial fights, then a post-game version of Mario, who's likely pretty high-leveled, could 
could just destroy bosses like Hooktail and Dupless way too easily. Perhaps all the bosses from Hooktail to Grotus could be scaled similar to one another in terms of difficulty, with the Shadow Queen boss rematch being the toughest of the bunch besides, you know, Bone Tail himself. This desire of mine became even more apparent after seeing the most recent Mario RPG remake trailer, where they specifically marketed the concept of harder boss rematches. If they can do that in that game, I see no reason why Thousand Yordors can be able to do it as well. Although Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door was technically the sequel to the original game, there wasn't a whole lot of, you know, connections made between the two games, at least not as much as I think there could have been. The late cameos were obviously made by characters like Paracary, Junior Troopa, and Lady Bo with Bootler and Poshley Heights in the postgame. Since they had no problem showing these two partners from the original Paper Mario on top of giving them some dialogue, it'd be really cool if all the other partners made cameos in the remake, even if they are, you know, postgame exclusive interactions. A character like Cooper could easily be placed in Petalburg, Goombario and Rogueport, and and Sushi or Bombette on Keel Hall Key. Watt and Lackluster would be weird ones because the places they join Mario don't really have concrete Thousand Year Door area equivalents. The closest thing would be Boggly Woods for Lackluster and Twilight Town for Watt, but maybe some of them could just be grouped in Rogueport together. Or all of them in Rogueport. <laughs> Who knows? The point is, I don't think it would require all that much effort to throw in updated models for these partners in the overworld for Mario to just talk to, and if they wanted to take it a step further, have Junior Troopa show up in a more traditional way that isn't in the background of a postcard, whether that be a special boss fight or just a conversation option. That would probably be the funniest one of them all. I, I love that little gremlin. a smaller wish here, and probably won't happen considering how this mechanic worked in the first game, but having the option for other Yoshi Kid colors would be so awesome. That guy is already one of my favorite partners in the entire series, and the color variety is one of the bigger reasons why I love him so much. Even if it's just a couple new colors, like yellow, purple, or brown, it would be very nice to see, and I'd be curious to see how the hairstyles for those guys would look if they were to become a thing. But yeah, I won't deny this one does seem unlikely because of the time differences with each color. What they'd have to do is they would have to make the new colors require more than 20 minutes of a wait time before hatching, or replace some of the original color times with the new ones with some of the old ones being pushed up more, meaning colors like black or white Yoshi would be the ones that require more than 20 minutes of wait time. We'll see how that plays out though, but I'm not really getting my hopes up too much. I bet some of the folks that clicked on this video assumed I'm hoping for Luigi to be playable in this remake. Uh, come on, guys. I'm not, I'm not that insane. I, obviously, I wouldn't be against the idea, but I feel like the likelihood of that happening is uh, very, very low. So I think a nice compromise would be adding some more flair to Luigi's side quest stories about the Waffle Kingdom, even if it's just some slideshow images. Seeing some kind of imagery on screen while Luigi is telling these stories would be a very cool way to encourage the player to actually talk to Luigi and pay attention to the stories instead of just mindlessly mashing A through the text or just reading it as is. Or just not not talking to him at all. Even if they wanted to keep Luigi's stories just through text boxes for the most of the game, another way to incentivize players to complete more of the game could be through the reward of seeing images of Luigi's adventures. Whether that be completing a specific mission or set of missions from the Trouble Center or just 100% in the game altogether. I think that'd be a pretty cool reward for the players who were willing to go the extra distance. And I think the last thing I'd hope for is access to a new area that wasn't a thing in the original, even if it's just a really small area, like smaller than Glitzville Main Square, to give you an idea, just, you know, so they wouldn't have to put in too much work. I think the most practical location could be Peach's Castle or Mario's house area in the Mushroom Kingdom. Just a small extra location to dick around in. Remember how you could go into Mario's house in the first game and there was a book that foreshadowed Luigi's first mansion adventures in Luigi's Mansion? Maybe in Thousand Year Door, you could go into the house and it'll detail Luigi's adventures in Dark Moon, Luigi's Mansion 3, or even a mixture of both. As for Peach's Castle, you could just walk around the main lobby and talk to some Toads. You know, maybe Toadette could be there since she occasionally pops up in Thousand Year Door exclusively to show Mario how to use his upgraded boots and hammer. I don't know what her exact dialogue could be, but just having that extra option to talk to her outside of the tutorials would be cool for me. Well, that's pretty much everything I'm hoping for when it comes to the Thousand Year Door remake. I tried to make this list in a way where all the things I chose feel like they could have at least a decent possibility of happening when the game actually releases. And there's not even a whole lot I want, to be honest with you, because I already like a lot of the base game as is. It's just so refreshing to see that a Paper Mario game like this can exist again on the Nintendo Switch, even if it's a remake. Of course, don't be a stranger to hitting that like button down below if you enjoyed this video and subscribing for more Nintendo-related content like this in the future. But for now, I will see you guys next time. Peace out, take care, bye-bye.